Hey everybody, Backpack Hack here coming at you with another trail tip on yet another 10 things that every bag needs. Now I've got two other videos that the East list 10 items that I think every bag needs. They'll be floating up here in the top right of your video and I'll put a link in the description below to those two. But these are yet another 10 things that I think every bug out bag, get home bag, inch bag, good bag, 24, 48, 72 hour bags, grab and go bags, whatever you want to call them. I think these are yet another 10 things that every bag should have. Whether it's a backpack like most people use or it's just a, a Rubbermaid tote that you put in your car for an emergency situation, these are yet another 10 things that should be in that kit. Number one, medication. Now it doesn't matter whether it's prescription over the counter, you should always have some of your medication in your bag. Because if you forget to take it with you, whether you don't have it with you in your get home bag or you forget to take it out of the medicine cabinet when you're bugging out of your home, you get away from your home and you can't take the time to go back and get it, you could be in serious trouble. And, as, and in addition to the medication, I'm also going to suggest lip balm in this list too, because even though it isn't medication, keeping your lips from getting chapped is very, very important. So these two items sh should be in every bag. Number two, hand warmers. These little chemical packages can produce enough heat to get you through a short-term cold spell. Whether you're trying to get home in a snowstorm or something like that, or your car slid off into a ditch on a lonely country road, get you through the night by keeping you a little bit warmer with these chemical hand warmers. So number two, hand warmers. Number three, a simple dust mask. That's right, dust mask. For those of you who don't remember, 9-11, a lot of people ingested a huge amount of concrete dust. And that concrete dust was very abrasive. And still to this day, there's people having problems with their lungs and respiration because of the dust that they inhaled. So you never know what kind of environment you're going to be in in an emergency situation. May not necessarily be concrete dust, but a forest fire or a windstorm picking up smoke or dust things like this, you want to be able to filter it out. And I'm going to suggest that if you get a dust mask, get a reusable cloth one. They're a little bit more money, but they are far more reliable. A disposable one bouncing around in your bag is going to wear out, and a dust mask with a hole in it is going to be useless. Get a cloth one. It's more durable, plus you can rinse it out and reuse it. Dust mask. Number four, hearing protection. No, I'm not talking about the great big hard shell earmuffs that you see at the range. I'm talking about simple hearing protection such as these foam inserts. You can get these at just about any hardware store. They're just little foam inserts that you roll up, you push into your ear canal, and it expands to fill your ear canal to give you some level of hearing protection. I think these are rated for like a 28 or 30 decibel. These are extremely cheap, they're extremely small, and they're extremely light. I picked up a hundred pair of these for like eight dollars at the local uh, home, center, home center, and you can see how small they are. You want to know the weight? Even in this Ziploc bag, on my scale, it waffles between zero and one gram. That's how lightweight these things are. So the benefits that you get out of these compared to the price, the weight, and the bulk is the, the, all those three things are just absolutely negligible. Eight cents, less than a gram, and look how small it is. The, 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 the benefits are just, I can't see not having those in there. Number five, I call this my hardware store. This is just a Ziploc bag that I've got all sorts of little hardware stores. I've got safety pins. I've got uh, key rings in here. I've got a razor blade. I've got paper clips. I've got tie wire. I've got all sorts of you know hair pins, just little odds and ends because you never know what you're going to have to MacGyver up in an emergency situation. So just having a little bit of hardware may make the difference. Number six, some sort of multi-tool. Now this doesn't have to be a $300 device, just something very, very basic. In fact, if you want to go down to Walmart, Walmart has a Ozark Trail multi-tool for like $5. That is better than nothing. Some sort of tool that has needle nose pliers, wire cutters, screwdrivers, file. Many of them have a knife, although you can get TSA approved ones that don't have a knife. But some sort of multi-tool to take care of those little MacGyver moments that you might have come up when you're in an emergency situation. Number seven, 
some sort of rain protection, whether it's a shell jacket like this, or even if it's just one of those little cheap $2 disposable rain ponchos you get at Walmart. Some way to keep yourself dry if it, if it starts raining. Now, how much you spend on this is up to you. Like I say, you can spend $2, you can spend $50, you can spend $500. I really don't care. But you need something to keep you dry. Because if you were inactive, and you're getting wet, even in 50 to 60 degree weather, hypothermia can be a problem. And hypothermia is not something to be taken lightly. It can be deadly. So staying dry means survival. Number seven, some sort of rain protection. Number eight, your grab and go binder. This is a container that you have all your important information. Now I've got copies of my driver's license, my vehicle registrations and titles, uh, the deeds to my properties, insurance policies, driver's license, social security card, um, passport. I even have all of my computer login information, passwords and everything printed out. It's all condensed. My birth certificate's in here as well. Copies, of course. Don't carry the originals. Always make copies because if you are out there in the middle of nowhere and you can't prove something, at least having a copy is going to help prove you who are you are who you say you are, that you own this vehicle or you own this property, what have you. So you never know when it can come in handy. And for what it is worth, this is where it, why I carry it. And I also carry a small tablet in here. So in case I need to, all that information is on the tablet as well. So number eight, your grab and go binder. Number nine, this is only for those of you who wear corrective lenses, whether glasses or contacts. If you wear glasses like I do, you're gonna want one of these, a small kit for repairing your eyeglasses. Nothing would be worse than losing your sharp vision in an emergency situation. This has a small screwdriver in it, extra nose pads as well as screws. And I'm also going to suggest for those of you who wear glasses that you get a pair of these. Some people call them croquis. I don't know what the generic term is for them, but it's something that you put on your glasses to keep them on your head if they fall off. This way I don't have to worry about losing my glasses. And also, if I need to take my glasses off, I don't have to worry about setting them down. They stay right here. So these, this, this is an item that you may want to consider if you wear glasses. They slip onto the glasses very, very easily and they come off very, very easily. So you don't have to worry about having your glasses come off and break. And finally, number 10, cash. That's right, green stuff, lettuce, scratch, the folding things, dead presidents, whatever you want to call it, cash is going to be king in a real emergency situation, especially when the grid is down. Your credit card or your debit card or your ATM card is going to be useless because nobody can process it. In an emergency situation like that, I doubt anybody's going to take a check, if anybody even carries a checkbook with them anymore these days. Cash is going to be king. And always carry a lot of small bills. If you want to carry $1,000 in your bug out bag, your get home bag, that's fine. But don't carry 10 $100 bills because somebody else may not have change because we live in a cashless society. So if there's something for $20 that you have the money for, you've got a $100 bill, but the other person doesn't have change, you either got to go without or pay $100 for it. So you want it in small bills, 20s, 10s, 5s, 1s, and if you want to, some quarters, but I wouldn't worry about dimes, nickels, and pennies. Those are really inconsequential these days, but a lot of small bills is going to get you through an emergency situation. So cash is king. And there you have it, yet another 10 things that every bag needs. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share on my videos. This is Backpack Hat coming at you with this trail tip. Be safe out there, and I'll see you out on the trail.